Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm here with Mr. Perry. Hello. Mrs. Lumsden. Hi there. And we're going to talk about how cathode ray tube works. So, uh, this is a cathode ray tube. It's made up of a vacuum tube, which is a big glass tube. There's no air in there. There is no air in there. There's a negatively charged cathode, highly negative cathode, a highly positive anode, and they're connected by a high voltage power supply. In this case, typically about 600 volts DC power supply. Direct current. That's direct current. The last thing that's needed is a heating element, something to heat up your negative cathode. When you heat up a piece of metal, it's able to give off electrons. I know, I know this, I know this. What's it called? Thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. And the electrons jump out of the metal and then fall, most of the time they fall back down again. But when you connect that high voltage power supply, the electrons are repelled from that negative cathode and they're and attracted. attracted. To the anode. To the anode. Oh, so repelled and attracted. And attracted. It. So therefore we get a beam of electrons. Free-flowing electrons without a conductor, just going through a vacuum. They're called cathode rays, right? And they're called cathode rays. Next we're going to move on to a diagram. You're going to be expected to be able to, to label or maybe even annotate a diagram of a cathode ray tube. So here we go. First thing you'd need to draw or identify is the vacuum, uh, the vacuum tube. Then you've got the highly negative cathode and the highly positive anode. They're connected, remember, by a, a 600 volt yep. DC power supply. So there that is. Uh, the last, lastly, you'd have the heater or filament, which is going to heat up our cathode, which allows a thermionic emission. Uh, and then you might even be able to have to draw the electrons, but probably not. Uh, whole story. How do these work? You need three things to make this work. First, you can try and put a, a negative cathode and a positive anode uh, just in a box, but that's not going to work. So, why is there air in there? Because but it could be because there's uh, well probably because there's not enough voltage. You need to apply a really high oh, voltage. Okay. So that's the first step in our story, Mr. Perry. Uh, but that still won't work. Uh, even at a really high voltage, you can't convince electrons to move from one to the other. So the next step would be to put a vacuum in, the, in, in between. So the, so Can you really put a vacuum in between? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Take everything out to create yeah. a vacuum. That's okay. what I meant. Yeah. So you take out all the air, so there's nothing blocking those electrons. Uh -huh. But it still won't work. Why not? I, I genuinely don't even know why not. So what we need to do is we need to actually get those electrons out of the metal. Okay, wow. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you need the heater. So we need the heater. The heater is going to allow that thermionic emission to happen. So the electrons can just jump out of the surface. And once they're out of the metal, then they'll be allowed to, to be attracted towards that positive anode and repelled from that negative anode, uh, cathode, negative cathode, so that they can flow from one side to the other. And cool. they would be accelerating, yes? And they would be accelerating towards that positive anode. Nice. I actually get this. Good. Well, Thanks, everyone. That was a great practice. Yeah, that worked really well. That wasn't a practice. That was, that the, was, that was a real thing. Was really so, yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah.